Hey, do you know what SLA is? What does it mean in the context of your Azure services and the applications that you build? My name is Adam, and I will explain to you all of that in today's episode of Azure Fundamentals. Stay tuned. This is the episode 38 of Azure Fundamentals course, and the objectives for today are as follows. We need to be able to describe Azure service level agreements, but also understand how our actions impact the SLA for our Azure services. And lastly, we need to understand what is a composite SLA and how to calculate it for our applications. Let's start with a definition of a service level agreement. Service level agreement is a formal agreement between service provider and the customer. In case of Azure, this is between Microsoft and our company. So SLA in the context of Azure simply means a promise that Microsoft makes to us when it comes to the service availability. This is both uptime and the connectivity of that particular service. And availability is simply a measure of time that this service remains operational. If you search the web for service level agreements in Azure, this page should come up first. You can find it at azure.microsoft.com slash support slash legal slash SLA. This page contains all the service level agreements for Azure services. So you can search for any particular service that you will use in your application. For example, type in SQL to find Azure SQL database service. When you select the service, Another page will be opened detailing all the information about SLA of our SQL database. So what kind of promise is Microsoft making when it comes to availability of Azure SQL database? So for example, on this page, you can read that if you use Azure SQL database in a business critical or a premium tier configured with a zone redundant deployments, Microsoft promises you 99.995% of availability. But if you use some lower tiers like general purpose, standard or basic tiers, or simply business critical and premium without those zone redundant deployments, the availability goes down and the promise is only 99.99. This is still a lot, although it's less than you could achieve. Therefore, this page will detail out what kind of configurations can you make for your services that will impact your SLA. When you open this page and you start reviewing the details, always scroll down to the section called SLA details. This section describes in a great detail how the SLA is calculated for Azure SQL database and what kind of factors impact that SLA. You can also find here a lot of useful information. And one of the most important one is service credit returns. Let me explain. If we are using Azure SQL database in a general purpose tier, Microsoft promises 99.99% availability. And if Microsoft will not meet this promise, if the service uptime, the availability will be lower than this, you will get 10% service credit. So what exactly this service credit is? It's simply a discount from your monthly bill for Azure SQL database. And if the availability will go even lower below 99%, you will get 25% discount from your monthly bill. And if it will go even further below 95%, you will get a full 100% discount for your Azure SQL. So you can review all of those details and understand all of the configurations that will impact this and make the right choice for your applications. Therefore, SLA is simply a promise of availability calculated per month. And every service in Azure has its own SLA definition because every single service can have different configuration and different availability associated with it. And the availability for most of Azure services range from 99% to 99.999%. But remember one important thing, most of Azure free service tiers do not have any kind of SLA associated. So if you're using Azure and you're purchasing free services or shared services, they do not have any kind of SLA. This also goes when you're using services that are currently in preview. They do not offer SLA either. And lastly, as I mentioned, if the SLA is broken, you will get a discount, the so-called service credit. So the percentages simply describe monthly downtime for your services. 99% is not so good with seven hours, 18 minutes and 17 seconds downtime per month. 
But one very important thing that I want to mention here is that this is the maximum amount of downtime that Microsoft says there might be. Typically, I used services with no SLA or 99% SLA, and I had no issues at all. This is just about the promise, so something to put in the legal documents. But this is how it is. So if you're building highly available and critical applications, you typically will try to reach those higher SLAs. For example, 99.99% is already four minutes of unavailability, and 99.999 is only 26 seconds in an entire month. And that's pretty much it when it comes to SLA itself. So my recommendation for you is, when you build applications in Azure, go to SLA documentation for those services, check the SLA associated with the configuration that you plan to use, understand if this availability is enough for you in order to meet your business requirements. You might also want to consult with your business users if this is good enough. That said, there's another thing that we need to understand, and this is a composite SLA. It's a combined SLA of all of your application components. Therefore, if you use multiple Azure services, you need to combine their SLA to calculate the SLA for your entire application. Let's start with a very simple application. Let's say we have users who reach our web application. We do not have any other components. This is a simple static web application. We host this on Azure App Service. If we go to the documentation for Azure App Service, we will find that the SLA for a single app service is 99.95%. So what does this mean for our composite SLA? It's quite simple because since we have only one component, the SLA for our entire application is the same as SLA for this particular service. So in our case, availability for our entire application is 99.95. That means the unavailability is simply availability subtracted from 100%. In our case, this gives us 0.05% unavailability. If you would want to understand how much time is that in a month, you simply multiply the average amount of hours in a month, which is 730 times 60 minutes, times the unavailability in the decimal points, which will give you 43,800 minutes per month, giving us 21.9, which is exactly 21 minutes, 54 seconds. If you're accepting that potentially the service might not work for 20 minutes a month, or you might have connectivity issues, then that's good and you can proceed. Let's move to a little bit more complex example. Let's say we have, again, a web application, but this time we also have a database behind the scenes. For the purpose of this example, let's say the SQL has 99.95% SLA and the same goes for our web application. How do we calculate SLA, a composite SLA for two components that need to work together? In our example, when users send a request to a web app, that request needs to be forwarded to SQL database to pick up some data and return it to our users. So both of those components have to be available in order for our entire application to be considered operational. When you have this kind of logical end between two services, the way you calculate the composite SLA is simply multiplying their availabilities. So let's calculate that. In our case, this is availability of web application multiplied by the availability of our SQL. So it's 99.95 multiplied by 99.95, which will give us the final result of 99.9% .9 availability. That's our composite SLA. If you notice the number, you will immediately see that this is a little bit lower than the availability of our components because now our application is dependent on both components working. Therefore, we are lowering the SLA that we can provide for our application. To summarize, the factors that will impact our SLA negatively are adding more services or using preview or free services because they do not offer any SLA. But let's move to another example and let me show you how you can impact your SLA positively by increasing it. In this scenario, our application looks a little bit different. We have users who will reach either of the web applications hidden behind load balancer. This is a typical scenario for very scalable applications. You put load balancer in front and then you have redundant web applications behind the scenes. So if either of them will go down, the entire application will still be working. 
Let me show you how to calculate the composite SLA in this case. First of all, always grab the SLA information from the documentation. Since those application services are exactly the same, they have the same SLA. But the important part is that when user sends a request, this request needs to reach the first or the second web application. Therefore, if you would put the logical statement between those, it's an OR, because either of those web applications have to work. Web application 1 has to work, or web application 2 has to work, in order for entire application to remain operational. When you have a logical OR between two services, the availability is calculated a little differently. It's simply multiplication of each service on availability, and then subtracting that from 100%. Let's calculate this for our both web applications. This means the availability of both of those web applications is 100% minus an availability of web application 1 multiplied by an availability of web application 2. So let's give them the values, move those to decimals, and the result is pretty great. It's 99 and 4 nines after the decimal point. So so-called six nines of availability. This is very good. Notice how much better our SLA got just by introducing another web application service. But we are not done yet. Remember that we still have a load balancer and that load balancer also has its own SLA. So how do we calculate this? Well, we're back to the first scenario. Both of those components have to work. So therefore there's a logical end between them. So we're back to the first formula. To calculate the full availability for our application, we multiply the availability of our load balancer by the availability of both web applications, which we calculated in the previous step, giving us the final result of 99.98%. I understand that this might be a little tricky at start, but once you start calculating this, it gets easier and easier to understand. So things that can increase your SLA are, for instance, adding redundancy to your services by multiplying the amount of services and hiding them behind load balancers, or changing service configuration. For example, very often adding those zone redundant deployments, availability zones also increases the SLA. You can read all about this in the documentation. But remember that in Azure, there's a lot of services that might serve the same purpose. For example, Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Table Storage are both no SQL databases. So you might want to consider which one of them is better for your use case, which one has better SLA or better pricing or both of those. And lastly, remember that about those different service tiers. As you saw when I showed you the documentation, choosing standard over premium over business critical might also impact the SLA for your application. So lower tiers typically have lower SLA, higher tiers have higher SLA. To summarize this episode, remember that SLA is a formal agreement between Microsoft and the customer. And that agreement talks about the availability of the services, so the uptime and connectivity. But it's simply a promise of that availability, and it's calculated in a percentage value. If Microsoft will not keep that promise, they will provide you a discount from your monthly bill on that particular service. This is so-called service credit. And the few most important things about the SLA are higher tiers provide better SLA. So better SKU, better SLA. Service configuration also affects the SLA. If you use free services, they typically have no SLA at all. The same goes for preview services. So that's why the recommendation is don't use either free or preview services for your production workloads. And lastly, if you are building applications that are using Azure services or in general any public cloud services, you should calculate the composite SLA for your entire application. All the materials for this episode can be found under episode 38 on my website. Now that we know what SLA means in Azure, we can pick the right service for the job. For today we're done. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And as always, I will see you in the next one.